Two, three, four. Run up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about bad trends in modern cars and what you can do about it. Often, just don't buy one of those. Now, the first one is something even I couldn't believe until I saw it. This is a rear main engine oil seal for a GM V8 engine. Now, this is just to hold it in place. You don't use this. This is the seal. But Unlike the older seals that were rubber based, this is PTFE. Stupid polymers like plastic, they don't hold up as well. And to compare it, even though different sizes, here's an old seal. You look inside, what do you see? A steel spring. The spring holds the rubber lip. They can last basically forever if you keep the oil clean. Take my old Celica, 24 years old, 240,000 miles. Still has the original rubber based rear main seal with the spring. It doesn't leak oil. But this GM piece of crap, there's no spring inside and it uses that PTFE polymer instead of the rubber. I had a customer the other day, three year old Chevy truck V8. The stupid seal went. It was leaking between the engine and transmission. And guess what? Then you gotta pull the transmission out or pull the engine out. It's harder pulling the engine out, so most guys will pull the transmission. Replace the little $25 seal and put it back in. But sometimes even that screws up, and here's why. When you install the original rubber type seals with the springs, this one came pre lubricated. You put a little oil and lubricate it, put it in place. It stays lubricated. But these PTFE seals, no. You don't put any lubrication on them. You put lubrication on them, they'll leak. First, you gotta take the old seal off. Use some kind of solvent so that it's completely dry. You get a seal, push your inner, and you hammer it in with a tool. Then this fits over the crank. Only with these PTFE seals, you gotta realize one thing. They have to form fit on the crank. So once you put them on, you cannot start the engine for at least four or five hours because the seal has to conform to the shape of the crank, stretch out and fit perfectly or it'll leak. I don't know how many times people brought me vehicles and said, oh, you know, I had a seal put on, but the engine's still leaking some oil, you know, especially when it's cold. And I explained to them, put it in and either lubed it or put it in and then started the engine before four or five hours was up, it didn't fit right, it eats the seal up and then it leaks and you gotta do the whole job again. Stupid design. Of course, leave it to GM to invent something new, PTFE seals, when the old rubber ones with springs work perfectly fine. Of course, the rubber ones, they have springs inside. They cost more money to make. These are the cheapest things to make. Do you really want something cheap if it's gonna cost you eight, nine hundred bucks to pull the transmission or engine out and replace the dumb seal that wears out faster? No, I don't think so. So boo to GM on that one. A regular oil seal with the little spring inside, crunches it down. These things are fantastic. And if you have a really old car and say it is leaking, as I've shown people in the past, you can use the AT205 reseal Pour a little in the engine oil. There's an old bottle that sat in the rain too long, but since they're sealed, it's still good. You pour it in, it has a polymer, and it rejuvenates oil seals if they're made out of rubber. But guess what? If you got one of these PTFE seals, you're SOL on that one up the creek without a paddle. It doesn't work on the PTFE stuff. So forget that. It doesn't help them. It'll rejuvenate rubber seals, but not these new seals. So you're going to have to pull the transmission off when these things, sealers won't help. Now the next trend that I can't stand in modern cars is the use of smaller and smaller engines and more technology to get more horsepower. And guess what? The engines wear out faster. Now in this 2016 Honda CRV, my customer is indeed lucky because they got the smart engine. They got the non-small Earth Dreams engines. As you can see here, it's a 2.4 liter engine. It's not a small one. These 2.4 liter Honda engines do not have oil dilution problems. It's the 1.5 liter turbocharged ones that have oil dilution problems. They're both four cylinder engines. Now, of course, if they're just plain engines with no turbos or anything, the 2.4 puts out more horsepower than the 1.5. So what did Honda do? They turbocharged the 1.5 to put out more horsepower. But you get a small engine, you throw a turbocharger to ram more air in, that increases the compression. Not only does the engine wear out faster, but and the Hondas, they've had an oil dilution problem. All that pressure is pushing gasoline past the piston rings into the engine oil and diluting it, which wears timing change, 
cam bearings, crank bearings, piston rings. Things wear out when gasoline is mixed with oil. Oil is supposed to be lubricating. The gasoline dilutes it. It doesn't do its job right. Got my customer here. I don't know how much they knew about the cars when they bought them, but they picked the right one. They got the bigger four-cylinder engine, not the little one. Even though the little one actually has more horsepower because it's turbocharged, this baby doesn't have oil dilution problems. It will outlast that 1.5 liter engine quite some time. Yeah, smaller and lighter and faster. Sounds great. Unless you want to keep your car for 150, 200,000 miles, 10, 15, 20 years. Here's what Honda says about the oil dilution, and I quote, a degree of oil dilution is normal in vehicles with a 1.5 liter turbo engine, and in most cases, there won't be drivability issues or unusual engine wear. Their definition of unusual wear is unusual if you ask me. But on your thinking cap, if you're gonna buy a car, stay away from 1.5 liter or even one liter engines that are turbocharged. They're gonna burn oil, they're gonna wear out faster. Take this regular 2.4 liter four cylinder Honda engine. It does not have oil dilution problems. You check the oil. It does not burn any oil. Heck, for ages they've been making cars that go two, 300,000 miles without burning oil, like my Celica. Why on earth would you wanna go back into the day when cars burnt oil? Now, when I was a young mechanic, yeah. I saw old cars from the 50s, they all burned some oil. Heck, back then, most of the engines didn't even have oil filters on them. They just had oil, you changed the oil every two or 3,000 miles. They didn't have filters on them. But we supposedly have gone a long way since then, and in the case of these 1.5 liter engines and oil dilution and burning oil, that's a step in the wrong direction back in the past when engines did burn oil. As I said, take this 2.4 liter Honda engine. It's aluminum, but it's cast iron sleeves inside the aluminum block, so it lasts and doesn't burn oil. Great engines. Why well, anyone would want to go into the past and make engines that do burn oil and say, that's normal, is beyond me. You want to take the ultimate extreme, if we go back to GM and their mistakes, you get their big Silverado pickup trucks now with a four-cylinder engine. I can't wait to see how those things fall apart and burn oil. Realize that in cars, just like in physics, you can't get something for nothing. You want decent power? Put in a 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine. Yeah, you'll get a little bit worse gas mileage, but you want to have even more power and get even better gas mileage? And you put in a smaller engine with a turbocharger? Guess what? Physics still exists. More strain, the engine's gonna wear out faster. Now the next trend that I don't like I'm gonna talk about is painting cars all the same color. Look at this. The door handles are painted the same color as the car. You know, there's no nice trim. I don't like it. Look how much nicer my wife's Lexus look. Got nice chrome trim on it. Chrome door handles on it. Got a little class to it. Although even it has the stupid plastic painted bumpers, which I've had to have painted three or four different times from dings and people bashing into it. That kind of annoys me too. But especially painted door handles. This is plastic painted white. It's gonna chip. Then it looks bad. Bad enough the plastic bricks, but then it looks bad. And then you gotta get it repainted to match the car. It never matches the car because this paint fades and this will be new paint. I hate painted door handles and they all seem to be going for it. Even on my Econobox Matrix, okay, it's got black plastic handles. I think even that looks better. They stand out a little. There's a little differentiation. Now, again, we're going to check this Honda CRV out. It is the special edition. Look, it's dirty, but it's got chrome. You look around the windows, they got chrome too, being the special edition. It looks a lot nicer. The front's got some nice chrome. It just looks better. Now, there is one modern trend that seems to be going away. Let's hope it's gone forever, and that's low profile tires. You'll see this Honda, it's got normal tires on it. Those low profile tires are horrendous. Sure, they corner great, but they ride like crap. And when you get holes in them, they cost a fortune. And being low profile, more tread on the ground, they wear out faster and they wear out unevenly faster too. And you probably notice that those run flat tires, you really don't see them anymore. They were such a catastrophe, they cost a fortune. And then they would get holes in them. You could drive on them, but then you'd have to get them fixed. It cost a fortune to fix them, a fortune to repair them. But the main thing was they were so stiff because you could ride them with no air in them. They rode like crap. Realize that your tires do a lot of the dampening of road bumps. They're rubber. They take energy bouncing up and down. You get a super stiff tire like those run flats. And even the low profile ones are pretty stiff with hardly any sidewall. They ride like crap. A lot of them really didn't like it. You don't see them on many cars anymore. 
especially the run flats. So here at least, the public has spoken. We don't like those crappy tires, and they're not making it anymore. And the last modern trend of cars that I can't stand I gotta talk about today is the baloney of people telling you, oh, you've got a new car. You never have to change the automatic transmission fluid. It's lifetime fluid, lasts forever. Well, not actually forever. There's a technicality here. I asked an engineer once, what do you mean by lifetime fluid? And they say, well, the fluid will last the lifetime of the transmission. And then I say, well, what's the warranty on a the transmission? They say, well, that's 60,000 miles. And I'll say, hey, I expect it to last 100, 260,000 miles, not 60,000 miles. You still gotta change the fluid in those things. Fluid gets dirty, eventually, It'll wear out. Gets dirty enough, it'll wear the transmission out, it'll wear the seals and the seals leak. Let's say you get a front main seal leaking on your transmission, you have to pull the transmission off to fix it. You can easily, in any of these modern transmissions, learn how to drain the fluid yourself. You take the drain bolt out, you measure how much came out, and you put that amount back in. And sure, filling them from scratch if you put a new transmission in, that's really complex. You use fancy computers like I have, you gotta road test it, look at the scan tool. When it says the temperature reaches a certain temperature, then you check it, add a little more, drive it around. But you got a clean transmission that's not leaking, you can easily drain out a certain amount that comes out when you take the drain out. I've got videos on that. Put the bolt in, measure how much came out, and then pour new fluid in the same exact amount. You can easily do it yourself. I've seen dealerships charge three to five hundred bucks for doing that. You can buy a lot of them three quarts of fluid will come out. You can buy three quarts of fluid for like less than forty dollars and do it yourself in half an hour. Don't get ripped off but do change that fluid because eventually it's going to wear out and it'll wear out long after the warranty period then the money comes out of your pocket not out of theirs. So now you know some modern trends in cars that I think are horrible and what you can do about it. Either fix them yourself or don't buy that particular vehicle in the first place. Knowledge is power. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.